Hi guys, have you subscribed to this Donna Dewberry channel? Well, I'm thrilled to come on and share with you lots of lessons, but to do that, I need you to subscribe and go to notifications and ring the bell so that you're notified when I'm coming on. I have lots of special free streaming lessons that are great for you to come on live with me. So please go do that and stay tuned for the lesson. Hi guys, I'm excited to share with you a sneak peek at what we're gonna be doing on the One Stroke Advantage. We'll have different opportunities during each week during the month um, for the 995 to come in and share with you different aspects of painting that I thought you might enjoy, tips and tricks and hints. And once a week on Fridays, we at this point on Fridays, we are gonna be doing special lessons that are exclusive. So this is just a fun little project that I'm gonna I'm gonna share with you the aspects of drawing and what will happen as we take it to painting. All right, so let's get started. The first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna be working with um, some art paper. This is a canvas paper, but I thought it'd be fun to work on it and share with you how this is gonna look. We also are gonna use some blending stumps. And so we sell these, they're just little wrapped type paper and it helps you instead of your fingers, I use my fingers on here but we can take and use um, the stumps as I'm showing you the shading. And the shading helps so you know where to shade on your painting when it's all done. All right, I'm using these big uh, mechanical pen pencils and um, you can get the fine pencils. I have all kinds of lead type pencils and graphite and all, but I'm using these because they're very quick and easy, especially if you wanna get some children or, or yourself busy drawing and you can carry it with you. It's already got a white eraser, which we need. All right, so the first thing I wanna share with you is I've got bad shadows this one. All right, so I want to take and come in with what's needed on this parrot first, all right? So I decided that if I come in here and get, I'm gonna get the top edge and I want you to do this really light. I'm doing a little bit darker so that you can see, but what's gonna happen here is you're gonna get this shape of his head, okay? And then we're gonna come right back here and it's like a heart. You see this? If you're looking at the wings as I'm doing this, his shoulders are up there and over here. And we're lightly sketching, do you see this? So imagine here's a heart, and if you're doing angel wings, it's the same thing, okay? And then this feather comes across here, this wing, and this wing comes across here. But we also still need the tail to come down here, all right? So a couple of things I just shared with you. A heart, this is a country heart where it's long and skinny. All right, so I'm going to come back here and come up a little bit, comes to a peak and it curves here. And right here's the net, the cheek right in here that's gonna come in. Can you all see that? All right, now let's come in here and do the top part of this beak, okay? I'll pull it over a little bit so you can see all in here. All right, now what happens when you're doing the beak is we have, we're well, gonna take it up in here a little bit more. We have a big curve, all right? And I want it to be really light. Remember, I'm only doing this dark so that you can see. And usually the bird has this all little chippy there. And then right under here, this bottom piece comes in. See that? Okay. Now the, what's gonna happen with this cheek, it's got a, a little bit of shading because we changed the colors in here a little bit. 
a little bit out here for the feathers. And I can show you right in here, we're going to make some, a few circles until we get the shape. All right. Now in here will be the center of the eye. And then all in here is this not so attractive piece of color or skin that's all in here. Okay. And then right here, we're going to bring some licorice in. All right, and that's the licorice that comes there. Okay, so I'm going to come a little bit more straight right here. All right, now what's going to happen is I can take this stump and see all that extra pencil I did in there. I want that licorice in there. Licorice in there. Okay, now what I saw is this came a little bit more. Let's see how it's easy to fix it while we're here. And we've got the white eraser. Okay, so it's nice to throw a pencil and a small sketch pad into your tote or your purse as you're traveling or, or around waiting carpool or whatever, because this is something really fun. I was on a plane and I was drawing a butterfly or drawing, I think I was just drawing flowers. And this woman ended up sitting in between my girlfriend and I, and she said, can you do a butterfly? And I said, sure. And so I did a butterfly. She said she was going to go see her daughter who her baby had died in, in her. And she had to go through all the delivery and all. And she was so sad and she knew that the butterfly meant something special to her. So I was able to sit there because I had this little pad and draw that to her and give it as a gift. And she wrote me back and her daughter did on what it meant to have that. So you never know, right guys? All right, see how that you can shade and get that look that you want. All right, so then I can come around darker and darker. Okay, and this is little wrinkles in here. Okay, if you really want to get to a bunch of detail. And the nose right there, the nostril. And there's going to be a highlight in here. So you can take away some. Maybe with the erasers better. I put a little bit of glare in that eye. See the glare? That's just with the eraser. All right, so let's look at these wings now. So lightly sketch. Okay, my problem with the short paper is that these tails are pretty long. And I wanted those tail feathers to come in here. See, I'm going down and up, down and up, down and up. All right. So what you can do on those also is use your stump or you can use your finger. You'll really like getting used, I mean, having the stumps and they're very inexpensive. You get packs for $2 or less, um, two or $3, depending on how many are in there. Okay. So then let's go back to the wing still. This wing is going to come over a little bit more because he's, he's turned looking back at us. All right, so this, the feathers are going to go really long here. And if you have more, more canvas saw, this tail could go way down here. All right, isn't this kind of fun? I really need you guys to write me and let me know if 
you like the idea of learning how to draw your own designs. I do lots of flowers and clay pots and different ways to create an original piece for you or you for yourself by looking at pictures. I have an entire certification on drawing, but my drawing is not to make it look like a realistic animal or whatever. My drawing is to help you be able to paint this. So it's, it's drawing and design teaching you the design how to design a painting. Okay, so now that's pretty quick there. So I'm going to come through here. Now I didn't know if I told you yet, but you can take and sharpen these with a pencil sharpener or an eyebrow pencil sharpener. Okay, so see how we're getting this. Now you'll see in some areas we need it really dark and that helps you know where to float and add more color. Up here, I want it darker. Okay, then I can come back a little bit more. I like this paper that I use. This is just a multimedia paper that's called Paper Canvas. And all kinds of companies make paper canvas. But you could just get drawing paper if you want. Okay. Now you can, after you get this all done, you get tracing paper. And you don't take and use your original, all right, to paint on top of it. But I am today. But I want you to know that if you just take tracing paper and trace it, and then keep your patterns all in one place so that if you want to do a parrot again, then you'll have your paper pattern already by tracing it and transferring it onto canvas or whatever. All right, so I'm going to decide where I want my palm fronds. Okay. And we're going to sketch it. Yes, these are where the fronds are going to be. Long and slender, just because you don't have to think about it if it's all done for you. So all you're going to do is stroke right on top of this. Now these would come right out from each other. Palm fronds do. Sometimes some ferns don't go exactly. I staggered that one. This one comes out right across from each other. And I like the shading to be in here. See this, just have fun. This is peaceful. Drawing just um, gets your mind off of stress and because it's calming. Okay, when I started doing pen designs on shirts, where we draw this on shirts, and then we paint in like watercolor. I would sit there and the whole class would be so quiet. All right. So see, that's all you're going to do. And you ought to stop the video and go and finish all those up. And anytime you can pause the video and it makes it easier for you. Okay. So there we are. Now what I want to do is like I said, this is paper canvas, so I'm going to go right to it. But make sure that you take tracing paper and trace this and then transfer it on. That's how I teach you in my, my courses, okay? Transfer it on. And this is just a copy I made of my original, all right? So let's come in here and let's look at this painting, all right? This one I freehand painted one day, and so what I wanted to show you is that I didn't draw it, but now that I've drawn one, it's easier to come back and do the painting colors. All right, so we're gonna take and grab the, the colors I've seen that a lot of people like, because I like to put hibiscus and stuff with it, is 
when I take and use the reds, yellows, and cobalts, all right? So we're going to have a cobalt blue, all right? We're going to have a red, and I really like apple red because it's really bright. These are all multi-surface, folk art multi-surface, and you can put it on all sorts of surfaces. That's why it's called multi-surface. All right, and then we're going to grab some good yellow. Now I did, this is daffodil yellow, but I have used some moon yellow with it also sometimes because it just makes it darker. Let's see. Um, it's just a darker yellow, all right? All right, see, it's just slightly darker. And we do put white with everything, so it, sometimes it makes it better. This is wicker white. And um, those are all the colors except for licorice. So I'm going to put a little bit of floating medium because we don't use water with my technique and with one stroke painting and except to wash the brush. And sometimes we use water when we're doing, um, what do you call it? When I'm trying to get a watercolor look on paper, when I do curly cues. All right, I'm sorry, I could not find my licorice. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do first to get the bird done. All right, our parrot. Now I'm gonna use, um, let's use, a, well, we can use a 12 or a 16. Let's, let me lay out these right here with us. Sorry, I need some paper towels here. Okay. So we're going to have a 16 and then I'll grab a 12 for a little bit smaller. And then we'll even use uh, like a one script liner as we're working on the eyes. Okay. So let's come in here with our 10 because I want to come into the, I, I need y'all to see that we're going to paint what's behind first. So what's behind on here? The head's behind and the tail's behind. All right. So I'm going to come right here. All right. And I'm going to use medium and pick up some red. All right. So I'm going to turn this around so I'm comfortable getting this in there. All right. Now what happens as you're doing this with lead is because we do portraits this way too is what happens is the lead helps shade flesh and some colors and it can help you get dark in where you want dark. So it just makes it a little bit darker here. See how I'm doing the edges so that, so that they spike out a little bit. There we go. All right, you can come a little bit. All right, now I can come back and shade that a little bit later, but let's let's go ahead and add. This is sometimes we shade by using floating medium only and side loading a color, but this is shading and floating with the apple red and licorice. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up from here and put a little bit of licorice on top of the head. Oh, I'm sorry. Up here. All right. And then I am going to come around where this eye is going to be and then down and around. And that gives you darker shading for the cheek area. And since this is going to be dark in here, I'm going to shade right in here and then I'm going to come back put a little bit of licorice along here and we're going to put some licorice on top here. But when you're looking at this, I want you to see that this goes on top of in front of the head, but you can't put the red on until the blue's on. 
the blues on first, then the yellows on, then the red, and then the black. Can you see it? So you got to go look from the back. And then now we're putting the red tail on. I'm just letting you see this as we go. All right. But I can put a teeny bit of red, I mean white, to get some lighter color in here. See? I had all red on here, a little bit of black in that one corner, so I'm not doing that. And I just touched the tip of that corner in white and just added a little bit of lighter color there. So it looks like it glows, okay? All right, now let's, let's go down to the tail feathers. Because this is easy. Look, we're picking up two. We're picking up on both sides. All right. And I'm going to, let's look at this really good. I'm going to touch, lean, and slide up on the chisel. See, that's dry. So, two things, it's because it's paper, too. But if I go a little bit slower because it's textured, it covers it pretty good. Or this is when I get some medium. And then it should feel like butter. There we go. Feels like butter as I'm stroking this in here. Okay, so what has to happen here is I need some blue. So I'm going to wipe some of that red off, but I'm not washing it off. And then I'm going to pick up some blue and I'm going to push and slide just a couple of blue feathers right on top. Okay, so what, what you probably see is that red, I mean that blue turned with all that red into another color. So what I did do is later I came back with the blue, a little bit of white. Okay, and then I just came back here. But right now it's just going to keep being muddy. So I'm just doing this now in case I forget to come back. All right, and just put a little bit of blue highlights. I mean white highlights. There you go. Isn't that kind of fun? All right, so we've got those. So now we can put the wings on top. Now I'm going to go to a little bit bigger brush. Where I am going to start with the blues. So I wet this brush, dried it off. This is a 16 flat. Okay. I'm going to pick up some white. And what's really good is these green handle brushes, you can get a set of 10 of those. They're usually around $16.95 for the 10 most used brushes. And they're very, really, very good quality. They're not my signature um, better brushes, but they work wonderful when you're learning to paint. All right, so look, you're going to touch and lean and pull. And you have to have good chisels, and my brushes have a really good chisel. The chisel's right there, and that's what we're stroking with. Okay. Now watch. I want you to see I keep picking up blue. And I want to see those different shades, so you'll see me grabbing white occasionally. Because that gives you depth. And you want it to go up under that wing. All right, so bring some white in there so you have different shades. There we go. All right, as this dries, you can do this again there too, like I told you. I was just turning it purple right now. So blue and white, and we're going to do, oops, this is going to come up here a little bit more. I didn't see that. Okay, so let's come here. And I did kind of curve this a little bit. And it is going to come down here. You want to come down here till you cover that tail. You want to cover where you stroke from that tail. All right. 
Now I do put all these in here now, but I did come back and take some blue back up into the yellow that we're gonna have next. Okay. So that's that's easy so far, right? Okay. I clean that brush all out. See, you don't want to touch <laughs> touch colors on there. So now I gotta figure out how to cover that, huh? Okay, so now we're going to pick up the yellows. So I'm gonna pick up both yellows, daffodil and moon. And then I'm going to grab some white. All right. Now this is pretty wet. So you could let that dry and then come up here. It's going to be all up and under that red. Okay. And then I want it darker in here. I'm going to go get just the moon yellow. Now yellow and blue make green. So we don't want to do that. So we're going to be careful about how we come down here into the blue. So we're going to come and make strokes down into the blue. All right, so it turns a little green. So let's pick up some white. And see, I want different shades. some white here and there. There we go. And then the red will come on top of that. So see how it's giving us a little texture? All right. There we go. So I hope you're enjoying this. It's just a fun little quick lesson showing you how you can accomplish a quick, uh, lots of birds are like this, but there's all kinds of parrots. There's all kinds of, let me put other birds that I do very quick and easy with uh, my one stroke technique where we're blending shady night lighting each time we're doing a stroke. Now let's go get our red. All right, so first thing that happens is I've got to go around the top here around the top and then I'm going to he's kind of fluffing his feathers so that's over the shoulder and see how I'm picking up and the feathers are not going to be perfectly even Okay, see how those feathers come in there? And then I'm going to come right in here and do the same thing. Some of this is going to be covered on this one. There we go. And I fluffed it up just a little bit over here. Okay, so now what I have to do, see, he's fluffy, but see, I really, he needs to be elongated. It'll be nicer if he's longer. All right, so I'm going to come right here with the licorice, and I double, I just put, side loaded that on the um, red brush. Okay, and then I'm going to come over here and come. Look, I'm side loading it right there, side loading the licorice. So I hope you like this lesson. It's going to be the type of thing you can expect as some extra bonuses on our group. I'm still going to have all my YouTube lessons I always do. And then we have this other advantage okay so there we go now i'm gonna while i have this black i'm going to come here and zigzag now watch this come down a little bit i'm gonna zigzag 
This is showing you some depth. And then I blend it in with the red part of the brush. Okay, that kind of fun. Now, I need that smaller brush I told you. So I'm gonna take the two, the one script liner and I'm gonna come right in here and make that licorice. And I'm going to also come in here and make this underneath part licorice. And that's the part of the beak that goes in up and to the top of the beak. All right. I also have to put some white in where the eye is all in here. We're going to put some white. And the pencil lead shades a little gray, which is nice. So I like to show you little tips and tricks that make you look like you're an incredible artist, even if you're just learning. So isn't that kind of fun? A lot of teenagers and younger kids, younger children that like to paint with me. And I've had five-year-olds that make my, my lady painters jealous. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna come right in here put the yellow part of the beak here a little bit of yellow and remember where i said that it's a little jagged right there my parrot always had little breaking uh, spots on him i didn't have one this fancy i had a monk parrot okay so now so we've got all this i'm sorry this is a little 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 This is what tells you on a flamingo that it is a flamingo. It's just what happens on the beak, okay? So I'm going to take a smaller brush, which is a six flat, and I'm going to grab a little bit of white and come along here. Can you see? I'm just going to... Grab a little bit of floating medium and side stroke a little bit of white. Okay, so then when I come along here, you can put a little bit of glare up there. And I should have let this licorice dry, but I'm trying to get this all done for you guys. Now, look what happens. I'm going to rub that white in, and then I can just do a little bit of a glare on the bottom of the beak. And then I came in here and make this white go right on top of here. All right. So what just happened, let me show you. I can get a wet brush, and I can take off some because uh, the paper soaked in the color so I can take off some of that licorice I put on there by accident just by putting water on my paintbrush. Okay. Just rub that in and you've got that nice shading. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this medium, the medium's a problem because everything has to be dry before you do this. And of course, I'm not letting it dry. All right, then I'm gonna come along here. And shading this all the way around. Okay. Now, also coming in here shading on the outside of the bird right where his eye is there we go all right so i can come in here and reinforce this licorice a little bit better right in here 
and right along here. There we go. All right. So my eye, I'm going to take the handle of a small brush, dip, and do a dot. All right. So I'm going to go paint some more, and then we'll come back. Um, I'm just afraid I'll forget to do it. So let me let me get my one script liner. I mean, my two script liner. I was using the one script liner earlier. All right, so let's go right here and get some licorice. And this is, with this two script liner, is when I would use some water. And I make it inky. Okay, now look what happens here. I'm going to come right along here. Right along here, smooth that out. And then all in here is, it looks like a wrinkled older man. <laughs> Okay, so we're doing all these wrinkles up in the skin area that's on, I don't know if it's called skin, but it's a soft tissue that's right there. All right, and then I'd like to come around. So I'm gonna come right in here and put the little nostril. So I'm picking up some licorice, there we go. And then right in here, there's a peak of paint. So I can take and move that down a little bit. And I'm gonna get the tip of thick paint, not, not inky like I just did, and put the little licorice inside that eye. But, but like there again, let this dry before you do this because um, it's gonna move around for you. And if I then went in there and touched it with licorice after it's dry and I didn't get it smooth, I can wipe it off because it doesn't, um, it'll come right off for you. All right, so let's do, let's let him, he's not too bad, huh? Look at that, All right? And that was quick, it's not a hard process to do that. But I wanna put out some brown and I put out the spur number and put it actually, yep, the spur number. And I put it right next to the yellow because what I did was I picked up some yellow with a 16 and then got the burn umber. Okay, and grab some medium so it moves for you because what we're going to do is we're just going to come right in here and make this branch. And keep picking up a little bit of burn umber because I like a little watercolor effect, but I got to kind of cover that red I messed up. Okay, and then we're going to come right in here for the darker up along the bird. All right. So you can do it all burn umber. I just like to have multiple colors on it so it looks like it's shaded as, as we go. That's one stroke painting. We kind of shade as we go. All right, so he's all in there, and then he's sitting on that branch. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come in with some greens. Now, what I did was I put all my greens in first when I did the canvas. I did uh, aqua and white, put some highlight of the yellow, and then I painted palm fronds in, and then I painted my bird. All right, that's 11 by 14, just to share with you. All right, now what I want to do is get out some thick, oh, this is sap green. And then we're going to use that yellow that I already put out over in the other plate. So right there, these are just foam plates. I've got a nice double loader if you're having problems and you're not sure about doing the strokes and loading. See how I'm loading two colors? On my practice strokes, I teach you how to do a lot of this learning process. So go check those out if you get a chance. All right, so what I'm going to share with you is that I'm just going to do the stem first and my brush is up on the edge like we did with the feathers. Then I'm going to touch, lean, and stand up to a point. But I'm staying on this chisel edge. So watch, touch the center of the stem, pressure, lift. Pressure lift, and they get a little bit larger as they go. Touch, lean, slide, and lift. Touch, lean, slide, and lift. Okay, 
now we're just going to go right on here again, pick up a little bit more, and we're going to do the other side. Now, if this is dry because it's paper, you can dip lightly into the floating medium and then come back here, work it in, and then you're ready to go again. So you touch the stem, you come down so you can see really good. You're going to touch the stem and slide. And it doesn't matter. I'm leaning this way when I'm going up here. And it doesn't matter which goes first, except if you want it to be darker, then whatever follows is the predominant color. So I went back to the palette. And so, and all this pencil mark, you can erase afterwards. Okay, so whatever follows. Now, if I was on some black paper or whatever that, or a canvas that I was painting, I would lead with, I wouldn't want the dark. I would want the light to be showing. So I'm gonna come right here again, grab some yellow, side stroke, side stroke. A lot of people, because I used to dip a lot, will dip, but I'd really rather you to side stroke to get it blended a little bit nicer. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna stand this up and this is a 16, but you might be more comfortable with the 12. And what's really kind of fun here is look at this. I can take this right on top of the parrot here. So it's kind of underneath. And also the little trick is I can cover something I didn't like <laughs> if my feather wasn't just perfect or something. Okay. So when I cover up like the branch and all, it makes it look like he's behind. All right. So, this, oh, darn it, I touched it up here again. So this is a, um, a great little project also. If you have teenagers or, or children that love art, they can pick up stuff so quick. So just let them turn it on and, and watch it. Let's see, and, but warning, they'll be asking you for art supplies. All right, so let's go up here. I have super deals on my website, onestroke.com, and that's all spelled out. All right, we're going to not push hard this time. Okay, I also want to show you, I need to quit though, I think. <laughs> I just want to show you a floated, floating medium if you want something to look like it's in the distance. I'm going to show you. This is a little. Okay. This is just a little sprig back there, but I'll show you that. There we are. Okay. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to pick up a whole bunch of floating medium. I'm going to clean out. That's, I was just going to clean out my paint into the floating medium but I had too much paint. So I'm just going to use this color. Okay, so see the floated? This is called shadow leafing. And so it's really kind of fun. It just gives you an illusion of leaves, like he's in the jungle. And especially when I didn't do the background color on white, this makes it kind of nice. And this was with a dirty brush and I cleaned it out in floating medium. But you can at any time, look, I can add a little bit more color and have it floated and pick up some medium and do that. There we go. Okay. All right. Hope you guys like this. Please let me know your input. Do you want to learn how to do some flower arrangements and paint them and do some clay pots and different elements? for your designing. Oops, one last thing. I didn't come around the eye. Okay, come join our membership if you want to see more of this for free um, without having to pay for my online classes. This is the advantage of a 9 dollars membership. 
and you get four free lessons. Four lessons, one, I guess you're paying $9.99. So you're gonna get one lesson a week. Plus I'll put in specials like this along the way. So you can't lose money on that, it's a deal. You get 10% off all the one stroke product you buy and 10% off if you wanna take any of my monthly online lessons on Zoom. And we'll send out some gifts every once in a while. We have all kinds of fun stuff planned for you guys. All right, so I'm just taking just the very tip of this liner and I'm doing all this touch up and highlight. So there you go. There we go. See you next time. Thank you.